All right, guys. So I'm gonna try to be able to draw on the screen here. It's not super accurate, but it'll probably help. Um, we've been doing one point perspective, and we started off with something where you could have a word such as this and be able to make everything make sense with one point up on the top of the horizon line. It could be anywhere, and this, I should say, and this it's up at the top, right up here. But it could be anywhere. We could have done the horizon line down here. And it would have changed the image because it would be like you were going directly at it. So all these lines would have been going to there, right? And it would have changed it dramatically. What's the problem with doing it this way um, directly on the horizon line? Well, it would uh, give you a lot of trouble if you were doing letters this big on it because you wouldn't be able to see where it was and you get a lot of problems. So if you're going to do one point perspective with something on the horizon line, you need it to be a little smaller and you have a little bit of space to do that. I hope that makes sense. But nonetheless, in this example right here, they're going up high. So we can see the top of the letters because they're below the horizon line. Now, if they were above the horizon line, we would get a point where we could see the bottom of the letters. So I just want the point I'm trying to make here is be aware of where you're putting the horizon line on the page and um, use it effectively. So if you want to show the bottom of something, you probably need to put the horizon line a bit lower or in the middle and have something above, right? So just kind of reinforcing an idea that hopefully already makes a bit of sense here. But we're going to look at, we're not just going to look at one point perspective and keep working with it. We're actually going to do two point perspective today. But I just want to remind you that what you've been learning about with one point perspective isn't going to suddenly disappear just because you add enough for point. The ideas of guidelines and a point and everything going to the points will still be the same. The idea that the horizon line is your eye level is still the same. The idea of establishing where you as the viewer are as a station point in comparison to what you're drawing is still the same. So we're just building on this idea and the system. So you've done a word. Hopefully you spent a good amount of time on that. I saw some of you turn them in. If you haven't turned it in, then you still need to do that and finish it up. And you added shadow to your word, hopefully. Um, if you spent some time on that, that would be good. If you didn't, then okay. Next time we're going to start adding shadow. But with two-point perspective, as you would guess, there's not just one vanishing point, there's two vanishing points. So, I'm going to try to draw on this as well. What's the problem with this illustration here? The same as what I showed you in the video. I had a video that was someone else doing this. Is that you should be putting your horizon line all the way to the edge of the page. The reason why it's not on the edge of the page in this slide is because of the white picture that I had to scan. I usually give you a copy of this to draw on, but it was you know, eight and a half by 11. I had to scan it for this purpose because we're online now. So it should be all the way to the edge of the page. And also your points should be at the very edge of the page. Why you may ask? Because it'll make it more accurate in the space, okay? Now, I want to just draw attention to the fact that I've written this and it's a little sloppy again because it was scanned as best as I could. But the point is that I'm saying here on this is that the blue lines are straight up 90 degrees to the horizon line. What does 90 degrees mean? Well, it means perpendicular. Okay, so you see these blue lines here. They're perpendicular. They're not going to... There is another type of perspective which you have a third third point way up in the sky if you're drawing something like you're looking up really high or down. 
where these would be going to that. But for two-point perspective, they're straight up and down. That means you need to be careful to actually get them straight up and down, not just go, oh, it's straight. Yeah, that's not going to work very well. You need to be careful to have them straight up and down. Okay? So let's reestablish that. I didn't know I was going to erase that for us, but nonetheless, here we go. Get that back again. And so we have a situation where we got two points of perspective. Okay, so these ones are straight up and down. Now, that's pretty straightforward. You're like, okay. Um, something that's a little less straightforward is where the lines that are going horizontal go. Because people get really confused about, they think everything on this side over here should automatically go to that vanishing point down there. But you'll see from this illustration that it's not so simple. You're not splitting the whole thing based on this middle corner and everything over here goes to that vanishing point and everything over here goes on this side goes to that vanishing point. It's about the direction that the plane is going in space. So this plane over here is going the same direction. If you put an arrow through the middle of it, it's going away from you in the same direction. And these two planes are going away from you in the same direction over here. So you have to think about where the direction of the plane. But before you do anything else, your first step is to establish where this corner is going to be, which I've done with the blue here. And from that, you actually, in the next step, develop kind of like a big box here, like this. Okay, so I'm going to do it over the top. See how you would do that? It would go over there. And then these ones would go this way. So if you do it that way, then you'll have the first step of your two point perspective. So it's a little confusing, probably because I'm going over the top of this. But I want to show you the idea of if you went, I'm just trying to show you the idea is if you went out to those perspective vanishing points on the very edge of the page. So I'm just going to erase this and from now on I'm going to use the actual lines here that I have and go over the top of them so it doesn't look like such a confusing mess. So we'll start over again just to show you real quick. So I have a vanishing point here and I've done them in the colors all these ones go here and all those ones go there okay so we first off going to start by establishing this corner after I'm going to do it in purple so it shows up better after you do the horizon line and the vanishing points. The next stage is to establish this big shape. Forgive the fact that this is going over the top here a little bit. It's the perils of working on zoom. Okay, so that's that. You'll see that this one, like I said, is going to the very the very corner is established right there okay next up what do you do well you need to establish these other lines you had this one already you gotta establish the overall cube 
you'll see in this type of perspective you're seeing two sides to it. So we've established this cube. It's going to be a good idea to even go so far as to establish. Oops, not that. Don't want that one. If I erase all of it, it won't work. Yeah, I, get, I want to just erase one of them. This is going to be problematic for me. Well, we'll just do this really quickly. So you have that line. Sorry guys, technology problems. You want to establish this cube first. See, everything over there going there. Everything over here going over here. It's much easier to show this in person on a little drawing tablet on the screen. Okay. Now, next thing I want to do probably is actually establish the cube without the roof. So, all of this is coming over there, like that. And all of this is going over here, like this. Gets a little confusing, so you want to make sure you're keeping your lines pretty light. And then after you have that cube, you can actually start to put the put the horizontal lines in. You're going to get a little confused here on some of it because that line is for the back, but it's going through the corner. So you got to really try to keep it straight where each of the lines is going. So this is why I'm saying first establish the cube. Now if you see right here, I have the whole cube. Once I have the cube established, I would actually go in and erase these yellow lines so that you would only have the outline of the cube, which would look like, let's do the different color to go, it would be this, to this, to this, to this. It would just look like a big cube in space, but it would be perspective. Now, with perspective, these lines are different sizes, but and they're diminishing in space, but they're doing it at a consistent rate. So they're not the same size, but they are the same size in in real life, so to speak. These would be the same length. They're the same size, but in perspective. Now, if your shape was not regular, where it was a cube, which everything, or a rectangular cube, where everything that corresponds is the same size, then you'd have to change and have a lot more perspective points. So this is a system that gets can get pretty complicated, but we're just going to keep it simple right now. So you get that cube drawn. You erase all the rest of the lines to keep yourself set up with just a cube. Now, let's erase it all and we'll just say we have the cube. So let's draw our cube back again. I have to do it again. You don't need to erase all the purple lines you would have kept. You wouldn't have erased them. But I have to because of the limits of this process here. So that's going to be that. You have your cube. In a way, it's good to see, for you to see me do this over and over again because help you um, understand the idea. You're going to need to use a ruler for this. I'm I'm not I'm freehanding it because I'm on the computer and also because I already have the guidelines and I have a tool that's making me draw automatic straight lines. You're not going to have that benefit. You can't freehand this. It will look funny. It won't work. It'll be off. It'll kind of work for a minute, but when you try to get into detail, it won't work. So you have your cube. What are these gray lines here? Well, I'm here to answer that question. They are how you find the middle point of the peak. Pink was a bad choice. Too close to the purple. 
Yellow is opposite of purple. Let's use yellow. Okay. That's the middle point on this cube. And you draw x in perspective, not the middle measuring, I should say, middle point in perspective. If you measured it, you would see that this is a smaller side than this because things diminish in space and perspective. So you have to draw an x to get the middle point in perspective. From there, you draw a line straight up into space. Straight up into space. And that's the roof. You have to do the front roof before you do the back roof. And at the back, you do the same thing with your X, but you do not draw the line up until later because you can draw the line up, sort of, but you're better off actually drawing this line first, the guideline of the roof, because it will help you when you draw the line up to know where they cross. Up here is the top of your peak in perspective. After you do that, these lines become a lot easier to draw because you don't have to worry about. You technically could create a perspective line over the vanishing point up in the air. It's called to do these because if you see about this, it actually is directly above the vanishing point. It's like an air vanishing point. It's directly above the vanishing point, but it goes into the air. See how they actually cross right there? But for our purposes, you don't necessarily need to do this. You can just connect them to that, and it would auto it will work automatically. But I'll just show you the idea so you get the idea. As, as you see up here, it's actually in perspective because they cross. This one's a little off technically. Um, they should cross right there. So this line's a little off actually. <laughs> Didn't do that right. It technically should go a little bit further over. But for our perspective, for our purposes, you're just gonna connect them. You're just gonna connect them up to the the middle point there on each side and that'll give you the house you're going to keep what lines you're going to keep when you do it when you turn it in are this outline line i want you to keep the x and the line up so it looks like a empty i say greenhouse because it's like a glass house you can see through so if you have questions you know, post in the discussion boards and we can figure it out together or pronto me, email me, that stuff, okay? When you go to shade it, you would have the light source would be his own vanishing point above the ground. And you would do this type of stuff with the same idea. You pick the light source, you have light lines, and they go... They create their own shadow vanishing points. There's a reference for the light on the horizon line. It's called a light vanishing point, and you can figure out shadows and fill them in. It's pretty interesting. You could go to this um, article about it. When we do the next assignment, we're going to be making a city block. I know want to learn about this, so I'll post some more information about this for our next assignment, you're going to be doing this type of work where you figure out how to make your own illusory space, but that follows. You can invent worlds this way and do all kinds of interesting stuff because you can, once you understand the ideas of it, you can make a whole world that you're interested in um, making up, but it all will make sense because it 
follows these ideas that are real, that work in real life, that are observable. And so you can kind of make yourself some really interesting things, which shows you an example of that with the greenhouse. So keep the greenhouse because we probably have you, you're going to take a picture of it, turn it in just like a greenhouse, but we're going to also have you do, I'll have you do a vanishing point for the shadow and that you actually create a cast shadow for it as well, which will be good for you to learn how to do just like this where you have a light source. All right, but as for right now, don't worry about that, all of this stuff with the city blocks. Just go back to the greenhouse and make a greenhouse in two-point perspective. Okay? And you need to watch the video about that. It's like four or five minutes that someone else made. They don't use a ruler in it, but I like to just have you guys see it because it kind of reinforces it from someone else's perspective. And their version of it, they kind of like, help you understand this idea that you do the horizon lines still and you do the points the problem with theirs is they don't do them to the edge like I said in the notes but they do the points and then what's interesting about how they do it which I liked was they just have you establish the corner right away and this big square of the space that everything's working in. Which is like, if you're doing a city block, this would be the, the tallest building. And then they have you kind of decide how big everything's going to be in the space. how far out it will be and then you have one big cube you're working with so I think you get the idea here it's a little gets a little funny when you get a lot of lines happening it starts to feel like really chaotic so that's why I say to you you know uh, erase the extra lines after you get the block so that you don't end up with this situation where you're like wait what line goes where because it gets chaotic really quickly so once you get this cube in here that's the cube without the roof erase the extra guidelines because it'll make your life a lot more simple all right okay guys take care uh, please message me if you have questions.